Hi, welcome back to Teacher Nurul's online classroom. Assalamualaikum, very good morning to all of you. Okay, so for today's lesson, you are going to learn about materials. Okay, materials. So this is for year two, chapter seven, get dressed. So if you have your super minds book together with you, I want you to open your. I want you to open your book and turn to page ninety and also page ninety one. Okay, so our focus for today is science. Okay, so the topic will be. Uh, uh, will have uh, will be related to science subject. Okay, now let's do some revision first. Okay, as usual. Okay, uh, for this uh, for this topic, you are going to uh, you must yeah, you must memorize the word jeans, sweater, jacket, skirt. Shorts, cap, shoes, socks, t-shirt, and the last one is trousers. Okay, so before we start, you are going to watch three videos. Okay, so please watch the videos uh please watch it uh try to focus and watch it and then uh try to uh guess what you're going to learn today okay so let's watch the video first My name is Matty Van Truyon and we are in Fair Isle, Scotland. I'm a crofter and a knitter. I design Fair Isle garments and I sell them online. Fair Isle is known in the world as a knitting technique that involves stranded color knitting. So it's basically carrying two colors together in one row, sometimes three. It's called Fair Isle because it originated here in the island. The Shetland wool was known for being one of the softest wools in the world. Fair Isle belongs to the Shetland Islands. The population of sheep is a lot higher than the human population. The making of a feral jumper, I think it can be divided in two different processes. One is the husbandry of the animals and then the other one is the making of the garment. You have a flock of sheep. Looking after them, feeding them, make sure that they stay healthy so that you produce a good fleece. <laughs> Shearing. I found that the best way to do it is by allowing the sheep to rest on your legs they become very docile and kind of happy animals. The moment that becomes like a factory thing, then the relationship changes completely. The fleece is spread out. You clean any debris, any grass. You roll it in one little bundle. Then it's sent out to Jamison Spinning in mainland Shetland with the Good Shepherd. are sorted and they're graded according to the quality of the wool. Then they get processed. It gets washed, it gets sort of pulled apart, dyed, spun, twisted, and then we get the cones. The cones get sent normally with the aeroplane from Tingwall into Fera. I received my yarn with the plane, I go and collect it and bring it to my studio. And then the process of making the garment begins. It comes the design stage. I start putting together colors and patterns and I create swatches. Wow. 
once the design is approved, then we go into the detailing. The knitting process starts with producing the ribs, taking that rib, transferring it into the flatbed knitting machine. I place all my wools and then I start knitting the garment. The machine reads the solid and hollow. Front, back, right sleeve, left sleeve. All these panels get put together. The sleeve gets attached by a technique called grafting, creates an invisible seam. The seam gets sewn along the sleeve. I produce the neck and then the neck gets grafted into the garment. Once the garment is knitted, is the finishing process. Trimming all the inside, you have to weave in the ends. It's the moment where I can check if there's been any mistake on the weavings. The garment gets washed in 30 degrees temperature. Put it on the stretcher in the woolly horse to dry. Once it's dry, it gets pressed and labelled. It's normally wrapped in brown paper, parcel, kind of old style, with a little string of wool. The knitting belongs to the island. People stop doing it, they leave the island, and someone else comes and carries on. So feeling that I'm continuing a tradition and preserving a heritage is full of satisfaction. Okay, so uh, that's the first video. So what do you think about it? Okay, uh, well, obviously it's about uh, the material. Uh, what material? Okay, what do you think? What material was that? Okay, uh, okay. Now try to think first, and then keep it by yourself, uh, because we are going to watch uh, to the sec. We are going to watch the second video. So watch this one first. Okay. Leather has a rugged appeal that dates back to primitive times, when humans rubbed fats into animal skins to preserve them. Times have changed, but leather continues to endure. It's strong enough to take a lot of abuse, so it's a very tough act to follow. This leather comes from the hides of cows killed for meat. Without tanning, the cow hides would go to waste. Converting them to leather is kind of recycling. The first step is to cut each hide in half. They drape the hide over a sawhorse and then stamp an identification code onto it. They slice down the center. The two smaller pieces will be easier to handle and process than one large hide. They load hundreds of the hide sections into this modified cement mixer to undergo some serious hair removal. The mixer is filled with water as a worker dumps in a combination of sodium sulfhydrate and lime. A chemical reaction strips the hairs from the hides. They bathe the skins in acid to prime them to absorb tanning salts. The tanning happens inside big wooden drums with prongs that keep the skins from getting tangled during the process. The chrome salts turn the hides blue as they bind to the collagen fibers of the skins. This converts them to leather. They feed the leather, grain side up, to a machine that splits the leather into layers. It slices the leather on the flesh side to an even thickness. The cutoffs will be recycled into suede. 
They check each piece of leather with a gauge to confirm the thickness is uniform. Now it's into the wooden drums for a second tanning. But this time they use a solution of vegetable extract, tree bark and water. They add some dye and a chemical that will make the leather water resistant. The solution binds to the leather, giving it a brown tint. It's a gentler tanning than the early one and it softens the leather. Now they brush a mix of starch and water onto the tanned hinds. It's a kind of paste that allows them to press the hides onto big frames of glass, which have also been moistened with the same starchy solution. Pasting the hides on glass allows them to dry flat. Wipers clean the glass between hangings, and a spray system coats it again with the starchy paste. This method allows the hides to dry without shrinking, and stops the ends from curling up. After four hours in a dryer, it's time to remove the hides. They easily peel away from the glass. A revolving paint gun system sprays the leather with dye to enhance the color. Now it's time to create some friction. A glazing jack pulls a glass cylinder over the leather repeatedly and the abrasive action polishes it. This glass is very strong, so it can do this vigorous work without breaking. Finally, huge heated rollers smooth out any wrinkles. It's the end of the production line for this big pile of leather. It will now be the stuff that many things are made of, and it's sure to live up to its tough image. Okay, so uh, that's our second video. Okay, that was our second video. So what do you think about it? Okay, so do you think that it's a little bit difficult to uh, prepare all these materials? Isn't it? Okay, so now let's watch the third one. Okay, let's watch the third one.
So that was our third video. So how was it? Okay. So uh, if you can guess, okay, the first video, the first video was about wool, right? The material wool, how they make wool. Okay. The next one, the second video, okay. What do you think about it? Okay. It's about how to make, how to make la leather. Yes, how to make leather. And the third one is. Okay, the third video is about how to make cotton, the cotton material. Okay, now, okay, now let's go to our, okay, our exercise for today. Okay, I want you to listen, read, and draw lines. Okay, before that, let's have a quick reading here. Cotton comes from plants. You can wear cotton shorts and t-shirts. Leather comes from cows. You can wear leather shoes and jackets. Wool comes from sheep. You can wear woolen sweaters and socks. Okay? So, now let's listen. Student's book. Page 90. 1. Listen, read and draw lines. Cotton comes from plants. You can wear cotton shorts and t-shirts. Leather comes from cows. You can wear leather shoes and jackets. Wool comes from sheep. You can wear woolen sweaters and socks okay so uh you can always uh rewind you can always rewind and listen again to the audio okay now i'm going to replay the audio and let's uh let's draw the lines together okay student's book page 90 one listen read and draw lines. Cotton comes from plants. You can wear cotton shorts and t-shirts. Okay, so cotton, shorts. Leather comes from cows. You can wear leather shoes and jackets. 
Wool comes from sheep. You can wear woolen sweaters and socks. Okay, so the first one we have cotton comes from plants. You can wear cotton shorts and shirts. Here, cotton shorts. Okay, this is cotton. Okay, this is the plant, the cotton plant. Okay, we have cotton shorts and also cotton t-shirts. Okay, and the leather comes from cows. Okay, cow, yeah, this is a cow. You can wear leather shoes. Okay, here we have the leather shoes and also the leather jackets. Okay, the next one we have wool. Okay, this is wool, wool, okay. Like you've, you've heard this song before, Baba Black Sheep, have you any wool? Okay, so this wool, uh, this is sheep, okay? So we have sheep here, so the, cot the wool comes from the sheep. Okay, so you can wear woolen sweaters, okay? So this is woolen sweater, and also we have the woolen socks. Okay, if you've got all correct, so congratulations to you. Okay, now let's go to the next one. So I want you to try to think and name the materials for the clothes, okay? Uh, write down whether it is wool, whether it is cotton, or whether it is leather. So I want to, uh, let's have a, a very quick one, okay? So as usual, you can always pause, okay? You can always pause uh, the video and do it in your notebook. You just write down the number. Just write down the number and write down the answer. You don't have to draw the pictures, okay? Okay. Now, I assume that all of you already done uh, already done the exercise. Okay, let's discuss on the answer. Okay, what about number one? The answer for number one is, okay, yes, obviously it is wool. Okay, what about number two? Yes, very good. Number two is leather. Number three, okay, we have a cap there. So what about the cap? The cap is cotton. Okay, next we have an apron. Okay, what about this apron? Okay, this apron is cotton. Okay, the material is cotton. Okay, what about the shoes? Look here, look at the shoes. Okay, what material is that? So the material is leather. Okay, next we have the last one. Okay, look at the look at the glove. Yeah, what about the glove? The glove is yes, it's a wool. Okay, so if you've got all correct, yay! Very good. Congratulations to you. Okay, now let's go to the next one. Okay, now I want you to try to look, read, and write the words. Okay, you've watched the videos. Yeah, you've watched the three videos before this. So what do you think about the materials? Okay, whether it is cool. Whether it is warm or strong, what do you think about it? Okay, look here. We have this one cool. Okay, what what material do you think? Uh, uh, what what the cool material? What do you think about the cool material? Which one? What material is this? And then strong. What about this one? Okay, strong. What material is this? And then we have warm. Okay, what about this one or this one? Okay, warm material. What material is that? Okay, as usual, you can pause the video and then write the answer in your exercise book. Okay, do it now. Okay, so now I assume that you've done your work, you've done your exercise. Okay, let's discuss on the answer. So number one, wool is, okay, what about wool? Wool is warm. Yeah, this is wool. Wool is warm. Yeah, wool is warm. Okay, then leather. What what about leather? Leather is the answer is strong. Yes, very good. So the answer is leather is strong. Okay, the third one, cotton. Yeah, cotton. What about cotton? Cotton is yes, the answer is cool. So wool is warm, leather is strong, cotton is Cool. So if you've got everything correct, yay! Again, congratulations to you. Okay, now let's go to our homework. So if you have your Super Minds book together with you, you can open page 91. So for, for this week of homework, I want you to make a poster with different materials. Okay, here. Okay, look at this one. Okay, you have um, these uh, these kids. Okay, these two kids. Okay, they've prepared uh, a poster. 
okay they uh, they 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 only you only have to write down the word cool strong and warm and then you look for the the real yeah, the real material okay you look for the real material okay and then you just put it in the correct column okay and then i want you to upload it in your uh, google classroom okay for this week okay so that's all for this week i hope that uh, you've got the lesson for this week uh, when you know better you do better so keep on learning and learning never stop learning so that's all for now wash your hands and please stay safe okay until we meet again uh, in our next online classroom okay bye <laughs> Jadi kita cek di buku, mana kita obat.